Hey everybody, I'm going to give you a quick tour of a Runco LS10 projector. These uh, retailed for about 27000 depending, and uh, I can kind of see why. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's anywhere near $27,000 worth of parts inside, but it is quite fancy. Um, I have had to do a ballast repair on it, ballast and power supply repair, so I have it all torn down and just finished doing the repair work and I'm getting ready to reassemble for its final testing before I return it. So before I put it all back together, I'd figure I'd show everybody what the insides look like. We'll start on top. Um, this is, I'm going to call it the translation board because that's what they called it in the 710, but I don't know if that's its real name. Uh, it's kind of an interface for the lens control and the lens position control. So maybe that's uh, still the translation board since it's translating the lens. It has some, let's see, we got some ICs on top and let me see here. Can we read these? Some kind of microcontroller. Yeah, motor interface board is what they call it. So that's what I'll call it now. This is actually the motor interface board, not the translation board. Looks like these are all motor control ICs. Maybe MOSFET packages. Not quite sure, but probably. Max 232, so there's RS-232 coming in. That's probably controlling all this. Don't know what the switches mean, but they're probably for options that aren't used. These uh, open connectors, all of them actually, except for this one, are unused. Everything's plugged in here except for that connector which goes back into what we'll look at next. So after the motor control board we have the main board. Let me unplug that infrared. There's an infrared receiver and an infrared transmitter. And here is the upper main board. There's two of these one underneath, you can see it down there. It's for the uh, RGB input and uh, HDMI. On this model, only HDMI 2 is used. HDMI 1 is if the projector was used standalone. This has a controller for managing all the inputs. You only run one wire to here and a power cord. Uh, actually, real quick, if you notice, there's a little bump here. When this came in, this back plate was all popped off. It looks like it got smashed up in shipping a bit. So I respot welded it and smacked it back flat. And I couldn't get that perfect, but I didn't want to stretch the metal. So once the cover's on, you won't notice it. It'll be fine. A little piezo beeper. I don't know what that's for. I assume it's for some kind of programming or testing. I don't like pushing buttons on these. So there's another one there. I'm not quite sure what they do. It's hard to get a service manual on this stuff. So I try not to, uh, you know, create problems. Uh, this is kind of interesting. This is some sort of opto, opto isolator that isn't enclosed. I'm not quite sure what that, that might be a trigger output. So maybe that's for managing the trigger output. It's got a pretty large MOSFET there. Not sure though. Let's see, we'll go over the, uh, Low voltage input here, a lot of filtering. Here's a relay. There's the output to the motor control board. Temperature sensor, temperature sensor, keyboard. Is that other multi pin cable here? These are all fans. And let's see that red and black. Oh, that goes here, that goes to that guy. And then the uh, ballast control, let's see, there's the ballast control, more fans, most of this is fans. And then we get down here, these are the outputs to the DLP chip, there's uh, three DLP chips in here, RGB. So most of the uh, video processing stuff is under here, I'm not taking that board out just to show you, but you can figure it looks kind of like this with a lot of extra chips on it. 
and not as much power stuff. And these wires here, these big wires, these are power from the power supply and ballast, which are all in here. And that's for feeding the DLP chip. And we'll look at those next. And here's the DLP section. This is really cool. There's some real nice hand alignment work going on, I'm sure. So the lamp is in here that shines light into the integrator goes through the integrator and there's a mirror in there reflects off the mirror goes to another set of mirrors in there which then reflects the light up into this huge glass block let's see if it's easier to see if I shine in light through the lens you get the idea at least so the light comes up and then goes to each DLP chip it's split they have a split combiner set up. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. This glass in the center, not positive, but oh yeah, there, yeah, it's made up of multiple pieces of glass. So there's probably all kinds of, uh, you know, conditional reflection going on and filters and whatnot. I thought that was broken when I first saw it, but it's just the way they glue the fixture together when they build it. So that's some fancy engineering. And then the output to the lens. I'm getting ready to hand clean this before I seal it back up. And you can see the uh, DMD board here. Gets its power on these wires. And then the video comes in, or the video signals come in on that wire. And each one of these has its own. And it's got a big old fan. Oh, and I should point out, this lens is actually removable. A lot of these higher-end projectors, you're able to put different long-throw, short-throw, anamorphic lenses in. This one, you push this catch in, and then you rotate, and then this, or actually, I guess you rotate this way. Yeah, rotate counterclockwise, and then you can slide the lens out. I'm actually going to do that once I get the top on, so I can clean the back of the uh, lens. And now I have the screws put back in to hold the shielding back on. Uh, I need to rewrap that, pull that out of the way. Fans plugged back in. We'll have to hook the uh, safety switch back up. That's on the face. This temperature sensor gets screwed to a metal <clears throat> Pardon me, a metal piece that's going to sit here. You'll see that. And I just have to find one more screw. Could go back to the uh, screw bin. It must have fallen in a different pocket. And there's the uh, last screw. We're holding all that back on. There we go. And then these wires. Go inside. Twist that. Looks good, everything's tight, those are good. So I'm gonna take that lens out and see if I can do this safely one-handed. So you push and then rotate, now it's loose. And then the whole thing should slide out. Yep, that unplugs. And just gently set it there so I can clean it. You can see where the motor controls all plug in. Right here. So let me clean that and put it back in. And there's the inside. And you can see the DLP chips. And we'll put that back in. We'll finish putting it together. And just like that, it latches right back in. You just turn it, and then that go snap right in. That metal guides the uh, plug right in. Not bad. So let's move on to the casing.